we are in the middle of an information war, bioweapons war, space war, a war underground, cyber war. One of the biggest casualties of this war, these silent wars, is relationships and friendships. Hey there. Wow, so there's so much I want to say to you and think about together. I think it's it's an incredible time right now, what's happening. A lot of my friends who don't talk to me anymore, it's okay. I understand. I used to support a certain politician and I used to hate another one. And I hated him so much, I could not say his name for three years. I shared mean memes that made fun of him. And I thought I was completely justified in doing that. Meanwhile, I teach unity and love and tolerance, medicine and music coming through me, prayers to ancestors, incredible life experiences. I feel so grateful for the life I've had so far. And I found myself when the big event happened in March, I found myself knowing immediately that something wasn't right. One of the first phone calls I had was with my closest and longest friend from seventh grade. And I called her and I said, please tell me you don't support so-and-so. She said, Donna, it's the children. And I said, oh, brother, I feel like you drink, you drink, you drink what I said to her. I got off the phone and I realized that I value that friendship. She's been my lifelong friend. And I decided to do my own research. Every time I opened a door, I would find another door to open. And I would ask myself more and more questions. There was so much craziness going on. And in the beginning, the first month, I obeyed, followed all the rules and did all the things that good little citizens and people do that care about our grandmas and all that stuff. And I did it. I kept my mind open and listened to a lot of ideas that were different than the ones that I held. And I think that's called intelligence, right? You know, I think it's also really, really important for being in a democracy. If we put ourselves in these little echo chambers, a lot of us will only listen to ideas that confirm what we already believe. But there's a danger to that, okay? So I understand now, after putting myself through a process of taking a certain color pill of the red variety, <laughs> um, a lot of things have come to light. One of the areas of study, I guess, that I went down was looking at our American history. One of the earliest videos I came across was a video by Sergeant Horton, and it talked about land, air, water, law, the idea of different jurisdictions, maritime time law versus law of the land, and Vatican ruling the, the law of the spirit realm, which makes sense, right? And then understanding what happened in 1871 when the United States of America was incorporated. So I was finding out about that, my choice, back in April. At the same time, I started asking myself, you hate this man. 
When have you ever embraced hate in your life? Never. How did I get to a place of welcoming hatred into my heart and then spreading it? How did that happen? I had to ask myself that question. And it was a serious question. And I said, well, you listen to um, objective news and media. Yeah, I stopped watching mainstream media back in college. So surely I'm listening to all of this objective news, right? So I start looking at who I've been listening to and watching. Oh, wow, wait, wait, that's not objective. That's on a certain side. All of these ideas and beliefs that I've been accumulating over the years have been on a certain side. They're not objective at all. And the more I got to learn about that, I started to see a complete inversion of everything. One of my experiences in life that allowed me to see what was really happening was my experience with domestic violence and abuse, being pulled and drawn into the chaos and learning how to take myself out and how an abusive person will create chaos and hook you, pull you in and how we can get stuck in that cycle of violence. There's so many different dynamics. There's projection, gaslighting. I'll go into more of this stuff in more detail in, in other videos, I'm sure. But because I had this experience with dealing with more than one sociopathic kind of narcissistic abusive personality, I kind of came to know and be able to see it for what it is. But it really took that March event for, you know, wah, you know, like the light to like, Whoosh, shine on everything that was happening. Many of us were jolted by that. It's beautiful. We're here to wake one another up. And that event is one of the big events that fuels the Great Awakening, as I understand it right now. But I walked away from the party that I had associated with. Oh, little kitty wants to go outside. You want to go outside? I know, baby. There you go. She's like, no, I just want to stand in the window and smell the air. So I walked away. I didn't know that it was called that at the time. It was just happening as I was learning, discovering, searching, asking questions, and going down some really traumatic rabbit holes and etc. When I realized that the news that I had been consuming, the propaganda, the narratives, the stories, all because everything's a story. Everything in my mind is just like a storyline, a story. And and the stories we buy into and believe and tell and all that stuff can change at any point in time. You coming inside? Yeah. Um, so I lost my train of thought right there, but it's all right. We're in the flow. I'm opening up to you. I'm trusting this process. I've kind of promised myself that I would share some of my story. Somebody said this to me last night. I wish I could be all Zen like you. And it was just kind of like classifying Zen in a certain way that was something other than what this person felt they were a part of. And so that elicited a conversation, God is in us, we are creators, we, we are expressions of God, our creator, whatever you call your higher power. It led me to talking to him about what a meditation is and what a prayer is, and how looking at a flower for 10 minutes could be a prayer or a meditation. I remember being younger and looking at other people almost with contempt when I saw people that were in their divine power Sometimes it would intimidate me. And then it's years later, as I'm doing the work every day, because it's a practice. It's a choice. It's not like being spiritual, but in a way it is too. We're all spiritual. We all breathe. We all have this connection. It's all inside of us. It's all right in here. We spend much of our life thinking it's out there somewhere. I'll be happy when. I'll be at peace if. If I had that relationship, I want to homestead when I have that. But when we get to the point, to the place where I call it like being happy doing the dish. Why? Because it's like a meditation for me. I don't think about anything, but I'm being productive at the same time, which is important to a Virgo. I get a break from the noise up there. My daughter is like, mm, the dishes. What's the point in that? She's an Aquarian. She's like, that's a waste of time. I need to go put my crystals under the moon because there's other things I have to be doing right now that's more important. I get it. I get it. But the meditation is <sighs> quieting the mind. It's a spiritual act. It's an intentional act. And sometimes we might not be completely aware that we're doing it. Like if we're doing our job, I was talking to a stonemason last night and he's the one who's told me, I wish I could be all Zen like you. I asked him, well, what do you do? In your job, tell me about what a day is like as a stonemason. 
I look at the rocks. Sometimes you like stumbling over the rocks and then you pick in the rocks that are the right shape and you're trying to get the right shapes to fit in the right spaces and, you know, certain things have to line up. And, you know, come to think about it, there's those days where like two or three hours go by and I realize, oh, wow, I was actually at peace. I'm not usually at peace. I'm, I wake up, I'm not usually happy. I'm like worried. I'm like anxious. And, and I'm like, that's meditation. That's meditative. You're working with other aspects of your mind and your brain and you're you're working with creating balance and symmetry and I teach these mandala workshops where we repeat patterns over and over again and in that process of trying to create harmony and balance around a circle the mind quiets and we relax we feel a sense of returning to wholeness and resolution and it's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Not everybody has this great, deep experience. Sometimes people will, and but sometimes people will just say, the beautiful thing about it was that for two hours, I didn't think about anything. I feel like I just got back from a vacation. I'm like, yes, that's awesome. So um, meditation, quieting the mind, remembering who we are, connecting to our divinity, body, mind, spirit. I see what's happening in front of us, and it's very chaotic if you get lost in it and and stay in it too much so i go into it i take what i need and i come back out of it just like what i learned to do in the journey through domestic violence and learning how to take back my freedom and my power and there's a line in a song in this is me that says and freedom's in my mind when i realized that freedom is in my mind i was free Tried to flee the cage on me, but you made it all again. Now this body has been set free, it won't wallow in your shame. Letting go has been so slow, it's taken too much time. Now I know how this must go, and freedom's in my mind Here's some wisdom I found my friend It's called Living Well is the best revenge It's Sunday. It's a beautiful day of new beginnings. Do lots of self-care right now. Oh, okay, I'm not done yet. I started off talking about how I woke up to things that I didn't understand and know and then this realization that all of these things have been right in front of me. Symbols, information, they're right in front of us, but we don't see it. Until we learn the language and words are spells. When you start to become aware of the power of words, what they mean, how they're being used in law and in various ways throughout culture, throughout media, throughout movies, it's everywhere. Once you start to see what these things represent and then we see how they are being weaponized. That's key because what's happened in this story of us growing up as mankind evolving, ideologies, ideas have been weaponized. A lot of things, movements, companies, groups, organizations, initiatives, they start out good. People have good intentions and specific systems and people in control of those systems for a very long time have been taking advantage of and pushing things out that help to keep us asleep. Like in the Wizard of Oz. In the poppy fields. Poppies, poppies. We're all like, you know, everybody's asleep for a long time. There's a few more things that I want to say that I didn't cover in the original film. So just looking back to what was happening, uh, March 13th was when my state went on lockdown. I knew immediately something was wrong and I started researching everything, everything I could find. I was listening to doctors, lawyers, virologists. A press conference came on and I was on social media and there was a fact checker on one side and the president was on the other side. And the fact checker was speaking over the president. And I just wanted to hear the president speak, but I couldn't hear the president speak. I was listening to the fact checker tell me what the president was saying. And I thought, are you kidding me? 
like, do you, do you think I'm that stupid? Like, I'm going to listen to you tell me what he's saying. Why can't I listen to what he's saying? So I said, this is ridiculous. So I went to the whitehouse.gov. I started watching all of the press conferences in full. And I realized immediately that the way that President Trump was being portrayed was completely different than the way he actually is. So I still wasn't convinced because I had all this programming in my head that he was this horrible, awful monster. And um, so I said, you know, I'm going to look into this a little deeper. I want to watch old videos of him because I used to watch his TV show. But I watched videos of the president when he was in his 30s and 40s. And that was a turning point for me when I realized this is a real human being. He comes from a matriarchy, a, a lineage of strong women that he loves and respects. He is a builder and a creator. His father was a real estate developer and his father taught him the business. And I listened to him speak about his dreams. He was soft-spoken. He cared about America. He was talking about bringing industry home. He was saying how important it was to support farmers and that the United States of America was going into debt. Remember, this is a long time ago. This, he's in his 30s and 40s. And he's saying that we can't continue to go on the track that we're on. Many of these interviewers were asking him if he would ever run for presidency and they were egging him on. They wanted him to run and he said, no, I would never do that. When asked why, he said, it's too mean. They're too mean. So I would just encourage you to go seek out these videos. Go look and witness who this man was before he threw his hat in the ring and the powers that be decided that they were going to turn him into a criminal and the most horrible person that you've ever seen. I checked myself, I'm admitting that I was wrong. So back in March, April, I was discovering this of 2020. And it was when I watched those videos that I just, I, it just clicked and it made complete sense. I started to follow him more and more and, and I started to look up the work that he's actually doing because the media would like you to think that he's doing nothing. So I went and started finding out what he's actually done for the United States of America. Meanwhile, people on social media are, call, are calling me a white supremacist and check my white privilege. And I stayed nice and um, I was trying to come from my heart and help people, like bring people along, try to help people to open up and see what I was seeing. There's a lot of parts to the deception and what has been happening, but I just, I really want to do as much as I can to help people see how the, the trickery that's been involved here. And we really do have to use critical thinking. But it's, it's more than that, though. I think we have to be able to see what has actually been done to us. We have to be able to look at the techniques that are being used. And once we understand that, we can see. But for me, it was a process. It didn't happen overnight. I spent 11 months from March <laughs> until recently researching hundreds of hours of research we are all going to be right about some things and wrong about some things but i just wanted to share a little bit more of my process of coming around once you stop hating the president you love him i see people embracing hate and they're miserable and then i see the patriots embracing love and we're happy there's so many parts to this puzzle and censorship i mean come on you guys do you not see it I believe that we agreed to come here for this incredible thing that's happening right now, that we are here to wake one another up. And we are waking one another up. And no matter what happens right now, this is for my patriots, friends, okay, and family. No matter what happens right now, in the next few days and upcoming weeks, the amount of love that I've seen in the patriot movement over the summertime, watching all the rallies, the spirit, the relighting of the flame inside of us, that is the flame of the patriot. We love our country. We love this land. We love our neighbors. We love our family. We love. <laughs> and this is such a beautiful movement. It is nothing like what I was taught. I was raised to believe certain things about, just to say it, the Republican Party. And I found out over time it was not at all. It was actually the opposite. I think I was able to see it because I learned to understand the techniques that are used in manipulation, control, and abuse. 
I want to help other people just kind of make sense of what's going on and take back their power. And nobody gives us our power. You, we take it. We have to take our power back. We have to take our sovereignty. And we have to exercise our rights. But we have to know about them. And yeah, a lot of us weren't taught them. So we need to study it ourselves. It's all about accountability. Stop whining and complaining and being a victim. Coming through the experiences that I went through with domestic violence and abuse, I learned how to take myself out of the victim role. No, you're not a victim, and I'm not a victim. So see it for what it is, call it what it is. We can blame, 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 blame other people, other things for why things are not the way they should be, we want them to be, etc. But if you don't like it here, then leave. I want you to stay here, but I want you to love and appreciate the men and women and animals who have sacrificed and the planet and the earth who has sacrificed it makes me want to cry what people have done for what we have i get emotional because my daughter's come around but there was a day where she hated she hated america you need to understand how important it is to love this country it's really important the amount of loss and sacrifice that goes on to this day that people are still completely devoted and committed to, to protect what so many of us don't even realize we have. I don't know, I'm just, I'm really passionate like I know a lot of you are. I've learned a lot. I was so wrong to mistreat my president. I was ignorant. And I was mean to my friend, and she wasn't mean to me. I you know, told her I thought she drank a punch, and I, to I didn't realize what that was doing to her until it was then done to me by a friend who did it to me. And I'm kind of help, trying to help walk her through now, because she had the same hatred. Those of us who see this bigger picture of what we are fighting for, which is you, your rights, our rights together, we are family, we're Americans, and the rest of the world is looking at us. And, and, and holding on to this glimmer of hope that if America rises from the ashes of this, so do the rest of us. If America falls, so do the rest of us. The weight of this is immense. And you've got people out there trying to help you see, and I understand why they get angry. Sometimes you want to shake your friend and say, get on the right bleeping side. Pick a bleeping lane. Pick a lane. Do you understand what is at stake here? No, they don't. They don't understand yet. So instead of getting angry and upset and mad at them and, and, and increasing the divide, how are we going to open up the bridge for communication? I'm going to share with you what I've done. And I'm hoping it'll help in some way because I feel like I just keep being brought back to this idea of unifying and being a unifier and how important that is for that we do this right now. United we stand, divided we fall, right? I had a friend who broke up with me twice. I love her and I, I wouldn't accept that. I wouldn't accept that. I was going to let her go, but I was going to try my damnedest to reach her some way. We are in the middle of an information war, bioweapons war, space war. A war underground, a cyber war. One of the biggest casualties of this war, these silent wars, is relationships and friendships. I said to my friend, can we just wait a few months, maybe till March, and agree that we are not going to allow our relationship to be a casualty of this war? Basically, she said, yeah, we can agree to that. Because obviously it struck her. And there's something to that. You know? I just want to say, all my relations are all related. And we are being divided by very sophisticated, organized plans. And it's so pervasive. And this is something else I experienced in domestic violence and abuse. The level of thought and manipulation that went into deceiving and trying to exert control over me 
was something I never experienced. I couldn't see what was happening in front of me because I had no experience with it. So therefore, it didn't exist for me. I didn't have a belief system around it. I didn't have an understanding of it. I was not able to understand how a manipulative, sociopathic, narcissistic mind works until I was dealing with one. And all of this crazy stuff happened for so many years, and it was a whole journey through abuse. And the beautiful gift of that was the wisdom, the wisdom that came from it, that actually has prepared me for this time right now. Let's not let our relationships be the casualties of this war. Maybe that's how we start to just crack things open so that we can start to have a conversation. And then there's a lot of diplomatic skills, communication skills that we can talk about and use that I'm hoping to share with you to navigate this like landscape that's just full of landmines. It's just full of, there's freaking mines everywhere. And you have to just have a, an understanding of the bigger picture and how things are used like our emotions. As soon as you are in fear and in a knee-jerk emotional response, your thinking brain shuts down. You're not thinking and acting rationally. You're not using critical thinking. You're emotional, angry, you're reacting. And now, guess what? That's weaponized. That's what we're dealing with right now. I shoot my arrows straight. I have a big heart. I'm a doormat for no one. So don't um, misunderstand my kindness or weakness. I just, I love uh, my family of humans here. And I believe that we get through this. I believe that we're climbing this big mountain and I see the sun. I see the rainbow that comes out. I see the valley. I see the beauty. I see what we do and create together. In each present moment, we have choices to make. So be in the present as much as you possibly can. Do your shadow work, you know, work on the wounds that, that you're carrying around. There's a lot of dark night of the soul stuff going on. People are, are being confronted with so many other aspects of themselves that maybe were not healed and were not worked with. But I believe that we are alchemizing something very magical and very incredible right now. Old, destructive, parasitic, energetic, heavier density frequencies are being alchemized right now. We're doing it. We're in it. We're doing the work. I see it as such a beautiful thing, but it's really, really, really hard. I'm helping my 20-year-old daughter do this, and I'm telling you, it's hard. It is hard for people her age. Sometimes they feel like there's no hope. There's no hope. So why should I even be here? I don't even want to be here. And I, I'm really grateful that I've been able to show up for my daughter. Anything I can do to help you show up for people in your life, to help you feel prepared for these moments, because these moments have been coming and they're going to be coming a lot more, potentially, maybe, maybe not. But, you know, it's the great awakening and, and it's everything. It's, it's all of it. It's all the emotions you will ever experience. But we agreed to do this. We are here to help support one another and help wake one another up because we've been sleeping. We've been sleeping. We've been very, 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 very asleep. We also permissioned a lot of things. With the light shining on things, the way that I look at it is because I'm an eternal optimist. Things have been done in the shadows for a very long time, so nobody sees it. It's happening in the dark places. But you know what? The light is shining on so many dark corners that once you know a thing, you can't unknow it. You know it now. Trust what resonates with you. People say, how do you know if it's true? Well, I listen to all kinds of things and then I, then I tune in. I use discernment, critical thinking, asking myself questions, intuition, and um, what resonates with me as truth. If it's true, I will feel it. I will have a knowing in my body. Then that brings up a whole nother thing. Are you in tune? Are you in touch with your divinity, the soul that's dropped into your body and the workings of your mind and how to quiet it and tune in? Anything you can do to get in touch with your inner knowing. The universe is inside all of us and we do know. We do all have the answers inside of us. We've been trained and told to look out there, but it's not out there. It is out there, but it's in here. Do you know what I mean?
<laughs> I don't know. I just, um, I know people are feeling so many things. I'm feeling it all too. There's days where I don't want to get out of bed and I pull the covers over, you know, and then I just tell myself, all right, just realign, get back on the horse. What do you know? Use your skills, use your tools, get out in nature. That's one of the biggest things for me is getting on that trail outside in nature. Luckily, my cat likes to go with me and where the medicine really is, you know, put your hands in it, breathe it. Take things off that are limiting you from breathing the fresh, beautiful air. The breath is a spiritual act. If you block it, I don't know, you know, it's your life, your breath. What are we without oxygen? Breathe the fresh air, get the sun, even in the cold, just warm. <laughs> oh, thank you to all the people who have been there for me, all the wisdom, all these years. It's like, it's, it's amazing. It's incredible. This life is a gift. The moment is a gift. That's why they call it the present. Right? I love you. I'll be back. Hang in there. We get through this together and we got this. All right. See you soon.